My name is Ayaluta Ferry. I'm a professor of hematology and medicine at the Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. Primary myelofibrosis is a form of blood cancer. The World Health Organization uh, classification system for blood cancers currently classifies primary myelofibrosis under the category of myeloproliferative neoplasms. As a background, the WHO organizes blood cancers into lymphoid and myeloid neoplasms, and each is then subclassified into acute and chronic forms. Accordingly, myeloid neoplasms are classified into acute myeloid leukemia and chronic myeloid neoplasms. Chronic myeloid neoplasms include the myelodysplastic syndromes and myeloproliferative neoplasms. Other members of the myeloproliferative neoplasms, in addition to primary myelofibrosis, are chronic myelogenous leukemia, polycythemia vera, and essential thrombocythemia. Patients with primary myelofibrosis present with severe anemia, often requiring blood transfusions, and marked splenomegaly, which is often associated with profound constitutional symptoms, early satiety, and over time, there is transformation into leukemia. Compared to the control population, patients with primary myelofibrosis have significantly shorter survival. In a recent study, which was international, and included 1,054 patients, the median age at diagnosis was approximately 64 years, and the median survival was approximately 5.8 years. Now, although this is the overall median survival, it can change from less than three years to over 15 years, depending on the presence or absence of easily accessible clinical and laboratory parameters. Based on this, the International Prognostic Scoring System was recently established, and one can clearly delineate patient groups with good, very good, and bad survival. Unfortunately, there is no controlled study at this point to show that any treatment modality provides a survival advantage in primary myelofibrosis. Young patients with high-risk disease are currently offered allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, but the overall impact on survival of this treatment modality is unknown, and as it is very well known, this treatment modality is associated with a relatively high risk of mortality and morbidity. Therefore, there is clearly an unmet need in terms of treatment for this disease, and that's why there is a number of clinical trials, including drugs such as JAK2 inhibitors, in order to make a difference in survival in these patients. At this point, most treatment is given to alleviate symptoms, and there are many choices in that regard. In the current edition of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, we are publishing the largest ever study in young patients with primary myelofibrosis that were followed to either death or a median of at least eight years for the patients who are still alive. This is the most mature survival data that is currently available in this disease. The study clearly shows that patients are living longer if diagnosed in recent years. For example, the median survival in the years 1976 through 1985 was approximately four to five years, while it increased to approximately eight years in the years 1986 through 1995 and appears to exceed 13 years in the years 1996 through 2005. This is very encouraging and suggests that perhaps new treatment approaches are making a difference, but one cannot credit this to these new treatment approaches 
in the absence of a properly controlled prospective study. The most important thing, the most important message to take from this study is that investigators cannot use historical controls in order to estimate the survival benefit of any new treatment modality. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.